All right. We're waiting for that special notification. Make sure that I... There it is. It is here. It is here, you guys. The notification is here. So there's, I guess there's like a 15 or uh, 20 second delay. I'm going to make sure that this tab is mute. <laughs> so I'm not uh, hearing my own, own damn voice. Uh, all right. Uh, well, you guys, you guys know the deal with these live stream. The first like eight minutes is me, uh, getting the word out about these live streams. Um, oh, you know what you could do? You could share it. You could share it around. That'd be, that'd be super rad. If you, if you could, uh, it will probably decrease the amount of time that I spend, uh, sharing things around. And uh, make it a make it a smoother smoother stream all around. Uh, posting up some links here. Uh, so if you're tuning in, uh, hang in there with me. Um, I don't have like a special staff person to do this stuff. So uh, it's just your boy, your boys, your boys doing all the shares. Your boys doing all the. Uh, um, basically all the promo shit that needs to be done in order for me to start doing this live stream to make sure that people know, uh, what's, what's happening and, uh, what's, what's coming down the pipeline. So, um, if you could hang on, I'm going to keep, I'm going to do that. I might talk about some shit while I do it as well. Um, you know, uh, I know, I know last week I didn't do a live stream, which, uh, yeah, I didn't do one last week because, uh, boy, was I tired. Uh, I was, uh, I was kind of not, not super burned out or anything. I was just a little exhausted from, uh, writing a whole, whole new show. There was like 28 pages or, or something along those lines that I wrote for, uh, the Citizen Revolution show on June 5th and then had to start writing the, the other, the other show that I did this past Friday. Uh, so I was just, uh, was just a little exhausted, a little burned out. So I took two, two, basically the weekend to, uh, slow down a little bit, uh, cause, cause I needed to slow down a little bit and, um, you know, yeah. So that was, that was why I took a little bit of time off. Uh, and, uh, and, and yesterday I didn't, I, I know I was supposed to go live yesterday, but I did not get to it. Uh, I did do one on Friday, and if you didn't see that on, if you didn't see the one on Friday, I would recommend that after all, all this, you go check that one out because that is about uh, that is about uh, Pittsburgh uh, Pittsburgh journalism um, and uh, and how they uh, censored there, um, you know. So uh, yeah, and and I've I've released a bunch of videos. I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, Chris, you release a, a shit ton of stuff all the time, and. Uh, I do. And some people are like, it's hard to keep up with all the shit that you put out. Uh, so there is a slowdown on the amount of content that I am producing. I was going every day at one point, um, with these, with these videos. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I am, I am not going every day with the videos. I, but I am releasing videos pretty regularly, pretty consistently. Um, I, I'm working on some like written pieces for my website uh, if, if you're, if you're into, um, if you're into that, that sort of stuff, uh, that is, that is available as well. Uh, and yesterday what happened was, um, I had to, uh, go and find some shorts, uh, cause, uh, cause I didn't have, I have like two pairs of shorts and it is the summertime. Uh, and, and it is, it is very hot. It's very hot outside. I don't, I don't know if you guys are aware of that or not, but it is boy. Howdy, uh, is the temperature starting to get pretty darn hot. <laughs> um, so I had to go, go find shorts and I had to like do grocery shopping too. Uh, cause that, that's a thing. And I actually like missed, I, like I have a bunch of, thumbtacks I need for my backdrop and uh I have uh unfortunately I didn't I wasn't able to get them and I have like things I need to do at the bank that I didn't get to um so yeah it was it was kind of a 
a challenging errand day, but, but I had to like hunt down to find shorts. Like, I don't know if you know this, but like, that's, that's like a super hard thing to find. Apparently is shorts. Very, very difficult thing to find. Uh, and I went to five different stores and then I found them, uh, in Aldi's is where I found this new pair of shorts. So, uh, that took a very long time to achieve. But it was nice because I did get to catch up with a friend of mine uh, that I that uh, you know we we try to do weekly we, weekly chats over over the telephone, um, and that was that was cool to do. Uh, we were able to uh, to catch up a little bit and uh, and go from there. So that was that was very nice. Um, yeah. So that's that's part of the reason why I did not. Um, do a live stream yesterday because by the time I got back, I was hungry and I was tired. Uh, and and then I, we were we, we were going to get together a couple of comics and I have been getting together over Zoom and hanging out and chatting. Uh, we try to do it once a week. And so we were trying to do that. Um, you know, so. Uh, yeah. That's it, that that happened yesterday as well. So I did. I You know, it was like, what was I going to do? It, there was not much that I could get done. So, um, yeah, that's why I didn't do a live stream yesterday. Because by the time that I got around to getting everything, it was it was already time. Uh, so we're almost there. We're almost ready to kick things off. So, so hang tight. Stay with me. Uh, we're go I'm going to invite a couple of the people that I know that regularly pay attention to this stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, you, it's, a lot of times, like this stuff doesn't get shown to people, even people that are. Uh, that that are regularly set to get, um, you know, uh, that are regularly set to get notifications from me. Don't get notifications from me. I've 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 heard that uh, happening before as well. So uh, we're almost there. I'm just inviting those people that I know regularly tune into to to this bad boy, this song bitch here. And uh, once we do that, we will get we will get going. Uh, you know, one of the things I am doing, uh, like I just told you or, during during me looking for the, you know, the story of the shorts and everything, uh, one of the things that I, that I do is a check-in at the top of the show. So if you have a check-in of your own, um, please leave a comment and we'll look at it uh, before we jump into it. And we'll, you know, you can talk about what, what's going on with you. Is there a project that you're excited about? Is there uh, something that you're concerned about? Is Are, are you excited about something? Just something to... to you know, check in with the world on. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you're if you're interested in doing that, you can you can leave a comment below, and uh, we'll 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 take a peek at it. Uh, and yeah, we'll we'll be kicking this song bitch off in just a just a few few short minutes. So hang with me. Uh, I know some of you guys have been hanging with me for uh, a little extra time, uh, and I and I do appreciate that uh, quite a bit. So. Um, yeah, we're almost we're almost there, you guys. We're almost almost there. Ba -ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's see, I think I pretty much got uh, almost everybody that I normally get on this thing. Yeah. Okay. I think that's about as many people as I'm going to get right now. Uh, and it's already starting to, yeah, we're already at like eight minutes. So, uh, we'll do some housekeeping before we, uh, get this song bitch kicked off. Uh, we'll start with the bottom one. Uh, so if you would like to make a donation, you totally can. Uh, it's not a requirement. All my stuff is available for free. Uh, if, if you, if you can't make a donation, I ask that you, Hit the share button, get the word out on this thing. Uh, that's the super easy way to uh, help spread the word. You can start a watch party if that's like a thing that you can do. I heard that's like a thing that people can do sometimes. Um, I am doing these virtual shows every single Friday. Uh, so uh, at the and into, into August, really. Uh, the only time that I'm going to take a week off is when it's a holiday week. And if I'm doing a fringe festival, which I have a couple coming up, um, and I'll talk about that in, in, in other different live streams and stuff. Uh, but 50% of the ticket sales will be going to a grassroots organization. 
uh, or venue. Um, this this Friday coming up, we are going to be donating to Level Up Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which is a POC owned dance and art studio and recording studio. Um, uh, I know Mario Quinn, who's one of the owners of it. And uh, he, the, him and everybody that works there, super dedicated um, to, to teaching dance, to teaching, you know, uh, the art of recording, uh, to, to rapping, to lyricism and everything. Um, they are a community driven, uh, small business venue and recording studio and dance studio. Um, and they are affected by this pandemic, uh, just like a lot of venues are. So they are doing a GoFundMe to, to make sure that they can continue doing what they're doing and helping the community of Garfield, which is where I used to live. Uh, so we're donating 50% to their thing. So if you want to get tickets, the link is in the description of this video and it's right there in the comment section as well. And lastly, I have a new album called Politely Angry. Uh, you can download that uh, for a dollar on, um, oh, it says pre-order. I need to change that. It's out. It's available. Uh, it's available on Bandcamp for a dollar, but it's also available on all of the streaming platforms. I haven't really talked about it all that much. Uh, considering all the things that are going on. Uh, and I felt like me trying to plug a fucking album wasn't particularly the best thing to do in the current climate. Um, so there's all of the housekeeping stuff that, uh, that we have to take care of. I'm going to turn that off. And I think um, it's time to begin the show. So we're going to talk about Dave Chappelle's new special that he put out, 8 46 eight minutes 46 seconds is the time uh that um officer derek chauvin had his knee on george floyd's neck eight minutes and 46 seconds um so i want to kind of go through the show and because i did this with uh chappelle special when he put it when he put out the new special that a bunch of people had problems with and i kind of itemized through like the different jokes and stuff so and it's something that i enjoy doing i'm very analytical about about this sort of stuff like i i have a weird analytical brain that's just how my head operates and this special is is very powerful it's an incredibly incredibly powerful special uh, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend watching it. I, I saw, I watched it twice. I watched it on Friday when it came out, um, and I watched it again this morning. Um, paid a little closer attention uh, to it. So um, here's here's one of the things you know. So before we get into the special, there's there's a little pre roll, right? Like because it's kind of set up like a thirty minute movie, um, and it's very. I mean, it's very well done. It's very well done. And I got to say, even even when we get into the the performance part of the show, like the fact that you can hear a little bit of the echo from the open space that he's in adds to what it, what the special actually is. Um, I, I thought the production value on this is is phenomenal. It's really, really well done. So uh, the beginning of the show, you see a bunch of uh, staff that are kind of uh, you know, uh, working to ensure that there's social distancing in place, there's chairs with circles around it and stuff. Uh, they're in an outdoor kind of pavilion -y area. Um, and then there's people doing temperature checks, right? Uh, and I've heard that there's a bunch of venues that are doing that. The venues that are currently open right now um, are, are the larger venues that are doing these temperature checks. So one of the things I think we can immediately take away from this right off the bat is that right now, um, entertainment, live entertainment is for the larger venues and it's for, uh, the more rich folks that can afford to do live shows, right? Like Dave Chappelle is not, is not a low level comedian that is touring around 50 seat venues to, to earn a living, right? To, to, to just make ends meet. Like Dave Chappelle is doing pretty well. I would not be surprised if Dave Chappelle personally made sure that the, the people working at the park and at the pavilion and stuff that he was he was at got paid out of his own pocket. I'm not sure if he sold tickets to the show. I believe the show was recorded June 6th, which is not that long ago. So this was like a really short turnaround. Like they were like if they recorded it on June 6th and then they put it out what June 12th, that's 6 days. That's 6 days to to edit a what I'm assuming is a minimum of 3 camera shoot. 
with with all of this staff and stuff, right? And it was two weeks after the death of George Floyd to coordinate this thing. Like that's a really, really quick turnaround to coordinate a whole show, produce it, film it, and and then release it. That's a really, really short turnaround. That's less than a month, you guys. Like that's that's a crazy short turnaround. Um, but it does show that like you kind of now need money in order to do a live entertainment thing. That's 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 kind of what he did, right? Um, Chappelle can afford that sort of stuff. He can afford to pay the staff. He can afford to to pay for the equipment that that uh, um, you know people are using to take people's temperatures outside. Wear the masks. Everybody got everybody got a Chappelle show mask, uh, which I thought was very cool. And it's like I would fucking wear one of those. I wear those all the time. That's that's rad as hell, right? So he's taking a lot of a um, lot of measures in order to make sure that uh, that you can do a live show like this. Um, one of the things I have heard, though, is that temperature checks are ineffective. Um, and so I'm not particularly sure. Like, doctors have come out and said temperature checks don't really say anything about COVID-19. They don't say anything about whether you have SARS-CoV-2 or not. Um, so if you're running, a, I mean, if you're running a fever, like, don't go see Dave Chappelle. You know, like, just stay home. You'll be fine. Like, it's going to be okay. Like if you're if you're running a fever, don't come to see my live stand up comedy. I'm going to understand. I'll send you a fucking recording. You know what I mean? Like I'll figure out a way that you get the show. Um, I'll send you a copy of my album. Like there's things that artists do in order to compensate for people that do get sick, that can't come that, you know, so. Uh, but the temperature checks, particularly I've read, are not effective so i'm not sure why venues and why even even dave decided to do it i know i'm nitpicking a little bit uh on that regard but um as a as as somebody that that tour that was touring for a living and now has shifted to a virtual space to a digital landscape um you know i don't think temperature checks are particularly the the the, the way that you ensure safety um the other things that that chappelle did with giving people masks and the six feet apart, the, the, the circles that he put on the ground, keeping a distance with from everybody. Uh, those are, I think, uh, a little bit more effective. But again, it kind of goes to show like unless you're a 250 to 300 minimum uh, seat venue, you know, we're not going to see live entertainment for a while, you know. And, and I was talking to a friend of mine. Um, I was talking to Mark Viola. I don't know if Mark's watching now or not, but uh, he's another uh, touring comedian. And we were talking about this exact thing. This exact thing we were, we were like, this is, here's what's going to happen, right? Is that these larger venues are going to open up and they're going to, they're going to rely on the celebrity power of someone like a Dave Chappelle or, you know, uh, a, a <laughs> fucking, who's the puppet guy? Jeff Dunham, yeah, like the Jeff Dunham is going to come to the club and sell out 100 tickets, you know, with social distancing and masks and do his racist puppet show, right? Or like Dave Chappelle is going to go and, and do do a show where he's going to poignantly speak the truth uh, and, and drop, a, as he says in the special, a couple of pussy jokes. Um, that, I think, is, is sort of where live entertainment is going to go for a little bit until we see the cases spike back up again. And I do think that they're probably going to spike back up again. Um, and that's a, that's a whole, I, that's a whole different rant that I'm probably, that I'm not going to get into right now. Um, but, um, so, uh, he gets up on stage and it says 87 days since he was on stage. And I mean, that's a long time for somebody to like, not do comedy. Uh, I didn't, those virtual shows took me about a month to figure out before I ran a test show. Um, and I did, a, I did, uh, Rob Green's Anderson comedy, uh, at one point as well. And, you know, that was about a month into, uh, into the quarantine stuff. Um, and that, I mean, it was rough. Like I felt very unpolished and jittery and like now I'm a little bit more comfortable. Like I still do this shit, you know, but this is, this is just sort of looser and me just kind of talking. And if something funny happens, it happens. But this is just kind of me talking about the ideas and stuff. Um, 87 days is a long fucking time. It's a long fucking time to not be on stage uh, or do anything sort of comedic. 
Um, and he said that, and he opens it up by saying that this is less than ideal. He kind of calls out the situation for what it is, and it is less than ideal. It's it's going to be less than ideal for a while. Uh, so we all need to adapt. That's one of the things we're going to have to learn. We're going to have to learn to adapt. And um, uh, he says uh, he, he he then says that he's excited that the young folks are in the front lines. Like he's taking a back seat, and he, and he's cool with us, with the younger kids. With the younger folks, this younger generation taking the heat, taking the front of uh, the uh, the protests and the movement, right? And, uh, and and that's that's really what it is. In every generation, it's always been the younger cats that have uh, taken you know uh, taken lead of the of the movement. You know, uh, like the Black Panther Party was not created by a bunch of fucking. Uh, but like thirty year olds or forty year olds, you know, somebody that's closer to retirement. It was created by like twenty two year olds. Bobby Seale and Huey Newton were like twenty two when they fucking and and I might be overestimating their age at that point. Um, and they started. I mean, they were you know to 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 talk about the civil rights movement and only make it about MLK and Malcolm X and not bring up Stokely Carmichael to not bring up the Black Panther Party. Uh, you know, is is kind of a disservice to the to the civil rights movement, in my opinion. Um, but uh, to back to Chappelle, about two minutes in, uh, he puts his notebook down, right? Like he picks it up several times throughout the special, but he put, put, put the notebooks down. Like he's done with the notebook. Uh, two minutes in, and he 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 asks the crowd like if this is weird, like if they feel weird about it, which is kind of interesting to see that you have somebody at that upper echelon of comedy that still gets insecure about some things, you know? Uh, I get, I get insecure about it all the time, all the time. Like almost every single time that I'm on stage, the show could be going amazing. And about 40 minutes in, I'm like, is any, do you guys still give a shit about this? Like, are we still in the show? You know, and everybody's still, like, everybody's having a good time. Like, even the good shows, I'm like, are, do we care? Like, are you guys, do you guys still care? It's just a weird insecurity, and I think it's a comic insecurity. It's a comic insecurity. It's a self-deprecation uh, where we feel like people don't like us. That Because that's sort of how society's uh, rooted in. And comedy is seen as this lower art form. Which it's really not, but it's 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 not a lower art form. It's an art form for the people. It is it is it is. I think stand up comedy is one of the very very few art forms that is very specifically for the people. And there are comedians that have been co opted by the establishment, um, and and we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, it is very much a, a the people's art form. I think uh, so. Uh, then he tries to attempt to do some crowd work to break the ice, and then he just fucking goes into it, like he just drills right into it. Right, he starts talking about the 90, 1993 earthquake, uh, where where he was like freaked out about this earthquake situation. He goes into it and he tells his story, and then he says that was thirty five seconds. Right, in thirty five seconds, he basically made this decision about like getting up, grabbing his keys, grabbing his pipe, grabbing some food, uh, grabbing all his, a, a bunch of money, and he was like ready to fucking go. And that was thirty five seconds of panic versus eight minutes and forty six seconds. That number is repeated, which is important because if 35 seconds was enough to make someone like Chappelle think that his life was over and he has to, he has to go into survival mode, eight minutes and 46 seconds is, is infinity. And he points out how George Floyd probably knew that he was going to die. And, and there's a, there's a very good chance that he probably did know. And this is something that a lot of people have talked about and Chappelle pointed it out. The cops thought they could get away with it. That's why they did it. That's why they continue doing it. Um, that's why you have the Buffalo cops resigning not for the fact that uh, an elderly man was, an elderly peace activist was violently shoved to the ground and was bleeding out of his ears. That's not why those Buffalo cops resigned. They resigned because the two cops that shoved this old man got suspended and they were protesting the suspension of violent cops 
they think they can get away with their violence. They think they can get away with their brutality. And when they don't, they react in the way that they're reacting now. And uh, Chappelle points out that he didn't watch the video for about a week. He saw the photos. This is an argument I've had several times. I've, I've, watched, uh, I've watched several of these videos. My opinion kind of waxes and wanes on this on this topic of whether we should be watching these videos or not. I think they're important. Um, I got into an argument in, uh, in the car a couple of years ago with my ex about this particular issue. We're, we're listening to a podcast about um, a, a story and I can't, I wish I could remember the details, but I can't. And I would have to go and look for the podcast. But the podcast was about police brutality. And they were kind of trying to break down the subject. This was maybe 2017. And we got into a blowout because I listened to, to the audio. And I mean, the audio is heartbreaking and brutal enough. And I was, I, I basically was like, look, I have watched so many fucking people get shot by the cops. And I don't know if I can do it again. And she kept saying like, no, we'll pull over at a, at a rest stop and we'll watch the video. Like we'll watch, let's just watch the video. And I was like, no, I kind of fucking don't want to. Like, I don't want to watch this guy die. Like, I don't need to see another one of us get fucking murdered. I, I, it's hard. And I don't feel like I'm up to it right now. And this became a huge argument about how I can objectively talk about it if I'm unwilling. And that's a good point. But it's also like, I don't want to watch one of my people get murdered. Period. It sucks. <laughs> That there, I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It fucking blows. It hurts. It hurts in, in, in unimaginable fucking ways. And that's what Chappelle was talking about. I, I mean, I eventually watched the video. I watched the, I watched the entirety of the fucking video. And you know what? It, it, it doesn't feel good. Like, I didn't, I didn't get... I, I wasn't just like, boy, there's subtle nuances that I'm trying to figure out and it, like it's not a fucking sports analysis i'm not running play-by-plays i'm not putting it on that dumb fucking board where they draw little circles and x's and arrows and shit that's not no i watched a man get murdered on camera and we're having a fucking argument about whether the police need to be defunded and demilitarized after we saw I mean, like, like infinite amount of videos of people with black and brown skin get fucking murdered. And there's only so much of it you can take. And this was, I mean, this was like a blowout in the car, right? It was a blowout in the car. <clears throat> like, there was, I, like, I was trying to keep it together. And this was also like, we were driving overnight. Um, so this was around around 3.30 in the morning. Uh, and I'm on like the third cup of coffee that I've had for that drive. And we still had about three and a half hours of driving to do. And, you know, we're, uh, she's basically arguing that I have to watch this video. And I was like, I don't fucking want, I don't want to watch somebody die. I've already heard it. And I, and I get that. I get why he didn't want to watch the video. I get that he saw the photo and that was it. I mean, how many times have we seen that photo? How many times have we seen the video of Eric Gardner getting illegally choked out? It's heartbreaking. It sucks. It hurts. And after a while, you don't want to watch any more of it. You know it's happening. Like, I've seen enough of it to know that it's a reality. And, and really, the discussion is, well... Was he running away? Was, you know, did maybe he deserved to get shot? Really? That's the fucking discussion? He deserved to get shot? He deserved to have his fucking, a 200 pound man on his, uh, on his neck? That's a bullshit argument. So if you don't want to watch the video, don't watch the video. And, and for Chappelle, that's kind of what he points out in that moment. So then we move to Don Lemon, right? Um, Don Lemon points out how, uh, uh, where are all the celebrities? Where are all the celebrities? Why aren't the celebrities saying anything? And that's what corporate media does. Corporate media likes to co-opt the movement and, uh, and doesn't, and doesn't want to justify it. This is a very old tactic, by the way. Uh, they don't want to justify the movement by the people 
or a protest or any of this stuff by the people uh, unless there is a famous person to validate its reality. Unless there's a famous person, some celebrity status person uh, to say, no, this is real. Black lives do matter, right? Like if it's just us on the ground, if it's just, if it's just somebody that, you know, that, 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 that marches on the streets, a, a regular day-to-day -day activist or a doctor that works at the hospital or a store clerk that works at, at, a, at a local bodega, if they say black lives matter, it's easy for, for these, these media outlets to, to say, well, no, it's not. And then they just show you fucking footages of riots and be like, is this what black lives matter means? It's like, that's not the fucking, but if somebody like Dave Chappelle says it, then to them, it's real, right? Only when it's one of them, only when it's another rich person that says it. And Chappelle's response, and I think this is this is the fucking crescendo of the fucking piece, is uh, this the, this is the street speaking for themselves. That's a powerful fucking statement. Only Chappelle can make this statement, though. Someone like Chappelle, anyway. It's basically Chappelle saying, "Hey, I don't fucking need to say anything." But I do have to say something to validate me not saying something. It, it kind of sounds like this weird clusterfuck of a statement. But like I just said, the only the only point in time where these these media conglomerates find any sort of validation in these movements is when there's a famous person that does it. What's Denzel think about it? What What's Denzel think about it? No one gives a shit what Denzel thinks about it. Never fucking cared about what Denzel thinks about it. You know what I find, what I get worried about? This happened to me um, on the June 5th show. Is, uh, uh, you know, at the, end of, at the end of these virtual shows, I'm doing these little Q&As and stuff. And that show went on, like, it was, it was long. It was covering the history of the Black Panther Party. So it was, it was, it was long. It was a long show. And at the end of it, you know, I, uh, I noticed a couple of people had uh, filtered away. And I got nervous <laughs> uh, that they hated it that the show was too long, it was too intense, and they didn't care about what was going on. And I got nervous about it, and I messaged them about it. Let's say Denzel Washington showed up to one of these shows, hypothetically, and uh, about 25 minutes in, he was just like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. If Denzel left, I'd be like, all right, I don't give a shit. But if one of you that are leaving comments that watch these videos on a regular basis, if you, when you guys leave, that's when I care about it. That's what Chappelle's point now. And of course, Chappelle has to point it out to validate the fact that we are valid. <laughs> you know, this. So what does he, he points out, you, you know, he says, you trust me. And they do. And people trust comedians. People trust comedians. Like I said, we, this is the only art form that is for the people. We, we are for the people. I, I have no, I have no corporate interests. I really don't. I, I, I'm, I'm supported by you guys. When you guys make a donation, I'm supported by you guys. If you guys buy a ticket, that's you. That's uh, that's not that's not fucking Coca Cola. That's not government fucking money. That's just you guys. It, this is an art form. So, like this is one of the only art forms that is solely for the people. That's a reality. There's a reason why most of the people in my generation that are now in their 30s spend a majority of their teens and 20s watching the fucking Daily Show as their source of news. They trusted Jon Stewart, a comedian, over fucking Anderson Cooper. Because Anderson Cooper has, uh, has investors and advertisers to worry about. So did Jon Stewart. And Jon Stewart got in trouble. Uh, when he started making fun of Arby's, there, there was a... Uh, um, it was he got in trouble at, until Arby's figured out that they can make money off of it. But but John, but the reason why we trusted John Stewart over Anderson Cooper was because John Stewart called out both sides of the argument. And then you know the the flames of McCarthyism get reignited, uh, you know, and people's opinions get in the way. So when you have people, I, you know, there's a part of me that you could you could claim is is partially biased. But I, I don't know. I don't know if you know if I am or not. I, I don't buy into the conservative side of the argument. I also don't buy into the neoliberal side of the argument. Um, I I look more towards 
stories and things that are not but people come here to to, to for whatever reason there's there's some people that value what i have to say which is awesome and it's great that you do but there is a reason why we trust comedians over over don lemon and anderson cooper and rachel maddow and tucker carlson and um some old fuck named stuart varney <clears throat> my the uh, opening to my album was basically pointing this out I, I talk about how i'm tired of the lies right and i basically point out how many times in our society we are actually lied to um and and it's basically like me it's it's the reason i wrote it the way that i wrote it was because i just want people to know like i'm not trying to lie to you i'm not trying to manipulate the truth in some way shape or form if if there is somebody that i trust and respect that i'm going to talk about but they have failings as well i'm gonna point that out you know why because we're all he fucking human beings i have no reason to lie to people i have no reason i'm not the, 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 when i talk about the black panther party like i pointed out the fact that eldridge cleaver after martin luther king jr was killed went out to hunt for cops because to them hope had died Hope had died. So when you take hope away from people, they do extreme things. Do I do I th think that what Eldridge Cleaver did was right? No, I don't. But it, it, and it led to the death of Bobby Hutton, who was the first Black Panther that was killed. <laughs> like I talked about that. If if I had a bias, I would just not bring that up. I would just not bring that up. They're all people. They're all human beings. They're all going to make mistakes. They all have emotions that they have to contend with. So on that point, what, what, what Chappelle's really saying makes that in with these streets are speaking for themselves. It's literally him saying, like, we need to listen to all levels. We need to listen to people at all levels. And I'm not just saying that as, like, I've been saying this shit for years and nobody fucking cared and blah, blah, blah. No, it's... It's literally a famous person validating all of the shit that, that various different comedians, various different journalists have been talking about for years. For years, they've been talking about it. And it's basically, like, no, it's time to listen to this on every level. And now we're saying it from the bottom to the top, that these streets are speaking for themselves. And when you stop listening, shit's going to turn bad. And then he talks about Chris Dorner. Uh, I learned about Chris Dorner from a rapper called P.O.S. Uh, he's a Minneapolis rapper, and he has a he has a line in one of his songs called uh, "Superposition slash, slash Sleeper Drone." I think is the same, but I, the song's called "Superposition." Um, it's the it's the closer to the album "Chill Dummy," and uh, he basically says, "I'm Chris Dorner. I'm Doberman Dirty Off Leash." And if you if you listen to the story of Chris Dorner, who's basically a cop that felt like he did the right thing and was and was kicked out of the system and then he personally was like well now i'm gonna what, what did what did chappelle say i'm gonna wage unequivocal war on the lapd um i, m I might be fucking up the quote but but that's what happens you took hope away from chris dorner who felt like he was doing the right thing he's that proverbial good cop that was there to serve and protect his community and when he saw somebody violating that serve and protect oath and went and told a superior and then got fired, what do you think is going to happen? And then how does that story end? It ends with uh, they find him at uh, Big Bear and 400 police officers came in and, and, and murdered the fuck out of him. The quote is, one of their own was murdered. How can they not understand what's happening in these streets? One of our own, several of our own, several of our own. So then he goes through the whole history, right, of, of police killings and shootings. Uh, we go, we go uh, uh, Eric Garner, Trayvon Martin you know, Mike Brown, um, he brings up, a, a, I should have written this gentleman's name down, but the, the gentleman in Beaver Creek that was killed. Uh, and then eventually it led to the nine Dallas cops getting killed by a black military veteran, uh, another four cops getting killed. And then he circles it back to Chris Dorner. That's the first thing I thought when he brought up, I was just like, holy shit, that's, that's what, that's, it's, it's Dorner happening all over again. It's 1993 repeating in, in, in 2014 or, or was that 2014? 
2015, whenever, whenever those Dallas cops got mur killed. It's just, it's the same thing. I mean, how can you not understand that? But nobody talks about Chris Dorner. That's not taught in schools. That's not, that's not part of the, uh, of, of the dialogue. No one's, no one's taking a nuanced look at what happened to Chris Dorner. He brings up the Black Panthers. The only time that the Republicans ever ran a gun restriction law was in 19, uh, 1967. It was called the Panther Bill. Um, I released a whole video talking about this just the other day. Um, and again, it's like I'm not saying, oh, it's said it first. It's like, no, history fucking said it first. It's just people are people have been talking about this stuff. Um, and and people are now talking about it on every level. We're we're talking. I'm 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 the I'm the fucking lowest. I'm a nothing and a nobody talking about the Black Panthers, and then Dave Chappelle, the echelon of comedy, is also talking about the Black Panthers. <laughs> you know, it's just, I'm I'm saying it's available now in all different levels. You know, it's becoming unignorable, is what that is. The final thing that he says, the final thing that he says, is. Um, these streets will speak for themselves, and this is the last space for civil discourse. This, this is not a special. This is a final warning, and I'm not sure if Netflix realized that because I, I think Netflix is one of the channels that it got released on. This is not a comedy special. This is a final warning. It's a final warning to the establishment that if they don't start listening and start doing what they are elected to do, which electoral politics is all fucked too, but the general idea of being an elected official is that you are a representative of the people. And if you don't start listening to us, if I may quote Chappelle, it's rat a tat tat to tat tat to tat. This is the final warning. How many of us have been talking about this shit? For how long now? This is not a, a, a 2010s issue. This is not a 1990s issue. It's not a 1961 issue. This is a country issue. This is the birth of your country comes from this. The history of policing is slave patrols. How can you take slave patrols and say that you're going to serve and protect people in the community? You can't. You fucking can't. There is a fundamental shift happening in society. And we are willing to go through the, the, the avenues of civil discourse. We've been, we've been begging for it. People like me have been saying, hey, here, this is a systemic problem. I will use comedy as a vehicle to address this problem and have the civil discourse of what we can do to, to shift the, you know, change the direction of all this. And it goes ignored. And now somebody up at the top, somebody from their class, the upper class, they're saying it. Chappelle's saying it. This is a final warning that if you don't listen, this is it. This is the, this is, you have room for civil discourse. If it doesn't go beyond this, we will step out of the way to let whoever wants to take hold, burn this thing to the ground. And then we together will rebuild from the ashes. That's what we'll do. Let's look at some comments, guys. <laughs> uh, glad you're talking about Chappelle. I wanted to know your opinion. Yeah, uh, I, I hope, I hope, uh, I hope it came through. I hope it came through. Thanks for watching, Vinny. Uh, Dave said it best. He did say it best. He's he was very succinct about it. It was very raw. This was very raw. This was a, a, a this was not a rehearsed thing. It was, it was quite raw. Uh, Jay Jackson, welcome back, Jay. I got a put my head above your comment. Uh, I listened to a podcast called Code Switch that recently talked about how watching these videos have desensitized us because nothing has really changed. It keeps happening. Um, and we keep watching. And after a while, it becomes quote, to torture porn of a sort. 
that is kind of what I felt. Um, and it's very difficult for me to watch them. Um, I watched the George Floyd thing and then I was like, I don't know if I can watch any more of it. Like it, it, like it was super difficult to fucking watch. And it just, it just kept pissing me off. Um, I watched one this morning that popped up. There's a gentleman by the name of Sean King. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Sean King. Uh, but Sean posts a lot of, uh, police brutality videos. That's, that's one of the major issues that he is an advocate for. Um, and it's hard to fucking watch. I mean, I watched one, I, it popped up on, on the Instagram feed and I was just like, this is crazy. Like, this is crazy. And, and honestly, like, I don't know how much more I'm probably going to be able to watch. Uh, it hurts. It sucks. It sucks. I don't, I, I. I don't want to be desensitized to it. Like that's, that's it. No matter how many times I watch one of them, like it fucking hurts. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I think, uh, Jen, Jen, you're right. Unignorable is the goal. That is our goal. We should, we should, um, we should try to be unignorable. This is all part of our history, but we've ignored our history by bringing it back up constantly and, and kind of making sure that people know it it becomes unignorable i wish civil discourse worked i hate violence but i can't uh condemn doing whatever it takes to stop this i agree with you i mean i'm i'm a pacifist i'm not one uh i was just talking to my sister today um uh, about you know gun ownership and and there's been a couple people that were like hey if you want to buy a gun uh i'll i'll help you buy one and i'll i'll help you learn how to use it. And I'm not going to lie. I kind of gave it a thought and, uh, I don't know. Um, I'm not, it's, it's not for me. It's just, I'm not wired that way. Uh, but I gave it a thought because we're talking about the military firing on its people. And we have a history of doing that. They blew up an entire black neighborhood in Philadelphia, Tulsa, Blair mountain, uh, Pullman strike of 1894. The list goes on and on. We've used the military on our own people before. Um, Kent State, Boston police strike of 1919. This is, I mean, the, I, I can keep going. We use military force on our people. And that's, uh, that is going to have a very specific reaction. Uh, and we're we're already getting reports of armed people showing up at the protest to protect protesters from the police. That's what the protests are about. That's what the defund the police movement. It, you know, if to, to I know I'm boiling down a pretty complex issue, but kind of we want the police to be demilitarized. We don't want to be afraid of the police anymore. They should be serving our community. Your your job should be compartmentalized. Why are guys for guns show guys with guns showing up to at a traffic stop or to take care of a domestic dispute or because your neighbors are playing the music too loud? That's fucking stupid. There's no I, I like I don't I don't have any other clever ways of saying it. I'll think of it later. Like when I'm writing a piece about defunding the police, which is coming up, which I'm which I'm working on now. Like I'll think of something like more poetic and, and fun to say, but right now I'm gonna be fucking blunt and say it's fucking stupid. And, you know, we want the stupidity to end. The streets will speak for themselves. And this is the, this is the last space for civil discourse. All right, we're going to move to the uh, second story here. So, uh, Wikipedia has uh, started censoring some anti-war and anti-imperialist journalists. This story just came out a couple of days ago. Um, I'm, here, here's a couple of news outlets that they have blackballed. They have blacklisted from their uh, network in saying that they are um, unreliable sources, right? Oh, they, they post all this fake news is what, the, what Wikipedia claims. Uh, the Gray Zone Project, uh, which is a fantastic uh, news outlet uh, that's run by Max Blumenthal, but it also has Aaron Mate, who is an award-winning journalist for his Russiagate coverage, uh, Anya Parmpil, uh, we got Ben Norton on there, several amazing people they have done on-the-ground coverage um, in Venezuela, in Latin America, 
and uh, they are incredible anti-war journalists. They're incredible anti-imperialist journalists, and uh, that they're being censored. The Mint Press News. I just had the owner of Mint Press News, uh, Manar Muhawish, on my podcast to talk about what she is seeing in Minneapolis, how the cops have been treating the protesters, how things have escalated, um, and so on and so forth. So um, that is considered as a unreliable to uh, source. Telesor, which was a Latin American um, news agency that that covered uh, on the ground reporting in countries like Venezuela and talked about the coup in Venezuela. You know, that, that, that coup we keep trying to run in Venezuela. They are considered Daily Caller, which is, which is a bit of a right wing site um, that I've read a few times. I don't I, I have agreed with them maybe once uh, and I've agreed with them on the topic of censorship. <laughs> And uh, and they are considered a, a unreliable source, according to Wikipedia. Uh, so here's the thing. Oh, oh, WikiLeaks is another one. They don't consider WikiLeaks to be a a uh, a reliable source, too. Fun fact. Fun fact. Uh, the Gray Zone has has existed as the Gray Zone Project for uh, four years. Two years before that, it was part of Alternet, which was a, as it suggests, an alternative independent news uh, news website. And in the entire time, never retracted a story. They've had to make some retractions off of like tweets that they've put out. I've seen them do that. I've seen them come out and been like, hey, I made a mistake. They didn't really go into the specifics and yada, yada, yada. But uh, major stories like this, this story that we're covering, uh, stories about how Sheldon Adelson was, uh, was paying to have Julian Assange spied on uh, in uh, in the Ecuadorian embassy, which is illegal to do. Uh, they spied on his meetings with his lawyers, which is illegal to do, which means that his case should be uh, should be null and void as a mistrial. Uh, didn't have to retract that statement. Like these guys are real investigative journalists, you know. WikiLeaks never retracted a statement. I have watched New York Times print out bullshit about my friends. I've like, in real time, I've watched them fabricate shit. <laughs> about like, uh, there's a story about Lee Camp that I've told uh, on these live streams before. I have fucking watched them do it. So, there's a story that came out uh, talking about the New York Times, in the New York Times, in 2007, about how there has been a corporate control of information on Wikipedia. The CIA... Uh, FBI, NYPD, BP, and other major corporations have infiltrated Wikipedia with its use of free editors, right? You just make a, you, you kind of make a, uh, a username and you can go in and edit and add your own sources and things of that sort, change information. Um, so corporations have basically been doing that on Wikipedia at least since 2007, at least, probably a lot longer than that, right? We discovered it in 2007 that this was happening. And uh, they blackball anybody that speaks out against these corporations. They pay editors. That's their whole job. That's their whole job uh, is that they pay these editors and they go in and they change information. So the CIA has paid people to go in, uh, change things about Iran, change things about Iraq, change things about their involvement in coups in these countries, uh, coups in Latin America. The NYPD was paying people to go into Wikipedia pages and change information about Eric Garner's death. BP was was doing it to change information about uh, fossil fuels and climate change, you know. Um, and the and the founder of Wikipedia uh, has said fuck all about it, right? This guy's like the guy that touts objectivism. He's like, oh, it's all about objectivism. All voices are important, you know. We got to make sure, but we got to make sure that we are objectively telling the truth. Uh, but I'm going to censor this side. I'm going to censor this side of the argument, though. Shh, 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 Don't, don't, don't say anything about BP. Shh, 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 but we are objective. Shh, shh, don't say anything about BP, but we're objective. There are political narratives that, uh, uh, that are favored, and, uh, so we're going to watch this video to kind of show you how these political narratives are, are favored. Uh, so this is a, let me make sure I'm on the right one. Yeah, so this is a course in Israel 
um, about changing information on Wikipedia. And I'm going to play a part of this because there, and this is a politician that says it too. Uh, so let's get doing a little intro. Hope you guys can hear all this. In conjunction with My Israel uh, has arranged uh, instruction day for wiki editors. The goal of the day is to um, teach people how to edit in Wikipedia, which is the number one source of information today in the world. As a way of example, if someone searches the Gaza flotilla, we want to be there. We want to be the guys who influence what is written there, influence. how it's written, and to ensure that it's balanced and uh, Zionist in the nature. I came here to learn. So, so he wants it to be balanced, but he wants to influence that it has a particular Zionist bias. So, so he'll delete anything that doesn't have that bias uh, is basically what they're saying there. Right. And and I'm not making a statement whether I am pro or anti Israel or whatever, because if you say anything bad about Israel, you're automatically said that you're you know, you're an anti Semite or anything. No, the, the issue is incredibly complicated. Uh, I know some things. I know there's a lot of violence from the uh, Israeli military on um, Palestinians. It's it's kind of like apartheid that's going on over there. Um, I don't know enough information for me to make a total accurate statement, but that statement is basically him saying that he's going to influence the articles to have a Zionist perspective and remove anything that doesn't. Um, so he's he, they're having instruction day, which is a weird like instruction day holy shit that sounds like a fucking authoritarian thing of like we're gonna have leader day where we all say nice things about the leader and it's required right <laughs> like all of that it's just all weird so why is that important is because wikipedia claims that uh therefore neutrality objectivism and neutrality that's like their big thing but if you have people that are going to make statements like this, where they go against this neutrality, where they are clearly putting something biased on the table, um, you know, what do you do? This is not, this is not neutrality. This is clearly taking a side. You are letting people delete things that might accurately show a different side of the argument. And they've seen this sort of stuff happen, by the way. Um, the, the Gray Zone points out a gentleman by the name of Philip Cross, this, this mystery editor. Um, and uh, he, he basically goes out and smears anti-war journalists, such as Max Blumenthal, who is uh, the owner of uh, the Gray Zone Project. In fact, they go on to say shit like, uh, oh, well, the Gray Zone Project is just Max Blumenthal's blog. And it's like, no, these are fucking investigative journalists on their own fucking dime. They flew down to Venezuela to cover what was actually going on in Venezuela to actually talk to Nicolas Maduro after a drone tried to assassinate him. And then they were like, holy shit, it's like a CIA drone that tried to assassinate this guy. <laughs> like, like they fucking went there on their own dime. They're not doing it out of some sort of state sponsorship, right? But they do it anywhere. Anybody that talks about um, anti-war stuff, Kyle Kalinsky who has a channel called Secular Talk, he has a bunch of anti-war videos. He does a lot of anti-establishment stuff. He goes against neo neoliberalism, um, you know, it, which is sort of the economic principle that we live under, right? It's capitalism and neoliberalism. Those are the two uh, two kind of economic principles, I think, uh, would be sort of the easy way to, to point that out. Uh, his page was deleted in February. They just got rid of his fucking page. <laughs> uh so the question is, if this is all about neutrality, why are there left-wing anti-war journalists getting deleted from this encyclopedia website? No answer from, from, the, from, from Jeremy Wales. I think this is his name. Jeremy Wales is the guy that owns Wikipedia. No answer from this guy. He has reliable sources on his website. I want to go through a couple of them. Let me scroll down to to the right section of the uh, the article that goes through it. Okay, here we are. Um, we go through a couple of these reliable sources that he considers reliable, right? Uh, so we have the New Republic. Uh, we have basically, uh, News Republic is, uh, most editors consider the News Republic biased or opinionated. Opinions in this ma uh, uh, magazine should be attributed 
News Republic, good to go. Opinionated, but good to go, right? Uh, anything, just to, just anything in New York. You got the Vulture, uh, Grub Street, Daily Intelligencer. Uh, that's fine. Uh, the New York Daily News is, eh, it's questionable. Uh, New York Post, eh, it's questionable. The New Yorker is good, even though I've seen the New Yorker post some really weird Russiagate stuff. Uh, the New York Times, which also posts really weird Russiagate stuff. Uh, that 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 has been constantly debunked over the last four years by by Robert Mueller himself and by the guy that that uh, by CrowdStrike. I uh, I addressed that in a in a video as well. E Entertainment News is eh. Uh, the Economist is good. There's a website called Electronic Info. Eh, uh, sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna fuck up the word of the uh, Intifada. Electronic Intifada. Uh, and they say that it is uh, unreliable with, with, with respect to its reputation, uh, probably an anti-establishment website, anti the gray zone, which like we talked about has an award-winning um, journalist, Aaron Mate won an award for his coverage of, and his coverage and investigation of Russiagate to debunk it. Uh, they are, they, they publish false and fabricated information uh, the Guardian, I've, I've seen the Guardian kind of fuck up a couple times. Uh, let's see what else the British Broadcasting Corporation. Uh, that's a state funded. That's that's I mean, that's a British state funded thing. Um, there's something called build. I don't know what build is. I guess it's a tabloid. Uh, Bellingcat. OK, so let's talk about Bellingcat for a minute. Um, Bellingcat, as you can see here, is funded by the U.S. government and is a regime chamed arm for the National Endowment of Democracy, a CIA cutout c uh, created by Ronald Reagan and is a host to uh, a crew of regime change advocates who work with the Western, Western government-backed organization like the Atlantic Council. The Atlantic Council uh, is also partnered with Facebook to police news on Facebook, and they are responsible for those psychographics that uh, Cambridge Analytica put out to manipulate people's votes to get Donald Trump elected which was paid for by Robert Mercer, who is an American billionaire. Uh, so, so all like the, the, this is just sort of like things that you can put together. Here's the hilarious part about this. Uh, Bellingcat's founder was a video game obsessed college dropout by the name of Elliot Higgins and has no journalistic experience or specialized knowledge. Uh, and he claims that he's qualified to cover you know, war journalism and stuff because he spent hours uh, playing video games, uh, which gave gave him the idea that these mysteries can be cracked. The dude literally said that I'm good. I'm good at journalism because I played a lot of video games. So I should be a journalist. Guys, I'm a karate master because I played Tekken 3 a lot in high school. So... Like I'm just I'm just like a I'm just like a super big karate badass because uh, I played I I mean so you know I don't know if you guys want to fight me or not but uh, I'm a super big karate badass Tekken three pretty cool but this guy is considered to be he's on the green he's checked the guy that said that he's a journalist because he played video games is a reliable source on wikipedia might be a couple more washington post oh yeah washington post 16 articles uh trying to smear bernie sanders in one day that is two per hour um so uh yeah washington times is questionable the weekly standard i'm not familiar with that website alternet unreliable al jazeera reliable al jazeera has done some decent work tell us Unreliable. Think progress is questionable. Think progress goes back and forth for me. They were a pretty good source at one point, but I've I've seen them post some really weird uh, bias articles. Uh, I'm unfamiliar with the Warp, WikiLeaks, another publication that has never had to retract a story. Everything that they publish is true. Why is WikiLeaks on here? Because the CIA, the FBI, the NSA, and basically anybody that's in the establishment hates Julian Assange for revealing their crimes to the world. Crimes that they are not in prison for. The dude revealed how the American military orders to murder murders of civilians and, and journalists. And he's in prison right now.
and uh, Wikipedia considers them to be an unreliable source for proving that shit. But no, the video game guy though, that guy's super reliable. Don't worry. If you if you play a video game, fucking nailed it. So uh some of the gray zone sensors, they talk about the gray zone sensors. Uh they are right wing pro coup anti uh, pro Guaido. If you don't know who Guan Guaido is, don't worry. Neither do the people of Venezuela. <laughs> Nobody knows. Like, none of the people of Venezuela know who he is. At one point, Mike Pence came out, was just like, this fucking guy, he's the president of Venezuela. And everybody in Venezuela was like, who is that guy? Does anybody, should we? Get Raul. Does Raul know this fucking guy? And they were just like, no, we don't know who this fucking guy is. He's just some guy. Uh, the, most famously, Juan Guaido, um, what the Venezuelan people that do know Juan Guaido is known for is he's this anti-Chavista that uh, during one of these protests that were happening, uh, like these pro, you know, the, the, they were kind of pro-socialist, pro-Maduro people, and they were marching. And he is from an anti-Maduro, anti-Chavista group that jumped out in front of this march and, uh, and mooned everybody. He showed his ass to the people. That's that's what that's what Guan Guaido is known for, uh, and uh, and that guy is who uh, Vice President Pence, President Donald Trump, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi, uh, whatever the fuck Chuck Schumer is, Mitch McConnell, all agree is the rightful president of Venezuela. He's never run for office. Venezuela has a better election system than we do. International election observers were like, this is the fucking, this is great. And then they look at like our election and they just hold up a picture of a garbage can on fire. Like that's what our election is. <laughs> like, and they're like, no, but, but we, but our thing is what we should send to other countries. You know, this garbage fire, like that's we're th this is like the garbage fire for the people. Like that's what the fucking, uh, so uh, the people that censor the gray zone, that's basically say the gray zone is uh, not a reliable source, right? It are, are basically people that are pro Guaido people. They are they are Venezuela like pro -Vene pro Guaido Venezuelan operatives, which is a bit of a mouthful. Uh, it's unsure if they're paid or not because Wikipedia doesn't disclose that information in their logs. But it's literally like one guy that keeps going in and changing all of the information uh, that they put up about Venezuela. And if they cite things like the Gray Zone, things like Mint Press News, Alternet, Empire Files, Telesur, um, they flag it and they say that they are unreliable sources. And they claim the reason why they are unreliable is because the Gray Zone uh, talks to networks like RT. Ooh, our Russia Today, you guys. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh, because Bla Max Blumenthal has shown up on some RT shows and he's talked about how uh, all the things we're talking about, right? The Venezuelan coup. He talks about anti-war stuff. He talks about how neoliberalism is here. He talks about how uh, Pete, Mayor Pete is involved in a bunch of neoliberal think tanks that were trying to sabotage the American election by using Shadow, the app that basically fucked up everything in Iowa. Right. Uh, he talks about all this stuff and they were like, Bob fucking Russian. I knew it. That's all. That's all right. That's the that's what the Russians say about. They 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 also say Mayor Pete was in a neoliberal think tank. And it's like, wasn't he, though? Isn't this it? And they're like, yeah, but it is. But you shouldn't say it. If you say it, you're a Russian. Is basically how they operate. Right. Just a, a fun fact. I have also been on RT. I've also been on free speech TV. Uh, which is considered some sort of, you know, fucking weirdo thing. Uh, I've also appeared on NPR networks. Uh, NPR, by the way, one of the NPR stations in in Arkansas. Uh, I got an NPR interview in Arkansas. Uh, got the 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 time of the show wrong. Uh, they got my city wrong. They said I was a Philadelphia-based comedian. When in the press release, I say I'm a Pittsburgh-based comedian. Uh, and guess guess what? These alternative networks that I've been on don't get wrong. 
Uh, none of those things because they read press releases. <laughs> I've been on like a bunch of different NPR networks and, and the one in Arkansas uh, in, in Fayetteville specifically was the one where they were like Philadelphia comedian. And I was like, no, nope, that's wrong. That's not a different cities, different cities, different cities. Uh, here's the thing though. Gray Zone does not get any funding from any like state. They don't get funding from Russia. Um, they don't get any funding from... Um, Canada, you know, another communist country, obviously, or China or any of these other countries, they are independent. They, they, they work on independent donations from people all around the globe, by the way. Um, and there were reports, oh man, this was when they were, when they were covering Iran, there were reports of people that were paying them through like PayPal or Venmo. And if they were uh, from outside the US, they were blocking those payments from getting through. There was a there was like a, a French patron that emailed them and said that the the PayPal bounced back and that's never happened to him before, um, and uh, uh, so yeah so so they were you know they're they're constantly censored and they're and they're going after them in different ways for covering anti imperialist and anti war stories. Now, uh, Wikimedia, which is the uh, which is the company that owns Wikipedia because that's how this shit works, right? Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about how Jack Dorsey is giving um, like $5 million to Andrew Yang's Humanity Forward uh, nonprofit thing that he's running. And uh, he's not personally giving that wealth. He's giving it through this other NGO that he's created, uh, this nonprofit that Jack Dorsey's created. And it's like, wait a minute, why does it have to come out of this nonprofit? Why can't you just make it come out of your pocket and say that you're making a donation? That's what we do, right? Like when I donate to a mutual aid or if you guys donate to me or if you guys donate to the Black Visions Collective or Level Up or any of these other sources, like don't you guys just do it out of your own pocket? Like we don't create another LLC to be like, let's funnel the money through the LLC and do it as like, a, like, no, why can't, you know? So it's just like the same thing. It's like Wikimedia is the corporation that they, that they help, but Wikipedia is a volunteer run um, encyclopedia website. But Wikimedia is the company uh, that uh, the Jimmy Wales, I called him Jeremy Wales earlier. That's my fault. So these are the largest donors of the corporation that uh, Wikimedia, right? Uh, we got Google, we got Microsoft, we got Apple, and we got Craigslist, which is weird. Is this like, are we just like, it's just like Wikipedia is just going to be a bunch of people that's like, I need things fixed in my basement. Cite my sources. The sources is my basement. That's the that Wikipedia. Like, yep, that's a source. <laughs> He's nailing it. <laughs> Put that up. <laughs> uh, in, in 2018, it was reported that they have $145 million in assets. Okay. And, and they make $105 million in revenue. Uh, so really, it's like they, they make $250 million. Like that's how much money that they make through these, through these donations. Um, Jimmy, Jimmy Wales, this is the guy that owns this Wikimedia stuff. Here's his belief. Uh, he believes in objectivism and volunteerism. He's an Ayn An Rand fan, Ayn Rand? Ayn Rand or Ayn Rand? Ayn Rand. Uh, anyway, he believes in Randism is what he calls it. And um, here, I'll, I'll, I'll play you guys a clip because the clip is important. It kind of explains his philosophy in uh, what he believes is the uh, is is sort of the the big founding thing. So this is the article, and da, 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 where's the clip there? Ah, there it is. I scrolled past it. Sorry, guys. Uh, so this is the clip. I want to make sure that the sound is going to work on this. Uh, sorry, I don't think I selected the sound on it. Fucking up, you guys. I'm fucking it all up. It's over. People are going to tune out because I fucked it up. All right. Now I'm sharing the sound. Yeah, I got the sound icon. All right. So this is this is him in an interview. So this is a short video. Uh, so the, it's Wikipedia founders on Ayn Rand making art and making money. So let's listen. 
Jimmy Wales, I want to know, how do you explain the point and how do you feel about it that so that Bill Gates, the founders of Google and others have become fantastically rich on their internet success and other huge contributors, including you, I think of Tim Berners-Lee, Richard Stallman, uh, have not. And I also am wondering, what would Ayn Rand make of it? I think of her as being an avid individualist and capitalist. But We're all wondering what Ayn Rand is um, thinking of it. Yeah, not much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it's, it is interesting, and it is one of the questions that comes up quite often. People say, oh, you're an objectivist. How come you're not milking this for every last cent? Um, and I think that's really a misunderstanding of, of what objectivism is about. Um, if you think back, if you're familiar with the, with the fountainhead, right? Um, and you remember Howard Rourke, who went and worked in a quarry rather than compromise his principles on what he was trying to accomplish artistically and creatively with his work, when he could have made tons of money as a famous architect, um, that you know, you, you realize, no, it's not really about making uh, the most money. It's about achieving your artistic vision. Having said that, I don't want to imply that that either Howard Rourke or I would think it's wrong for people to be making lots of money. I think it's really fun. It's really great. Um, it's just, well, the particular historical path that I took to accomplish my work took me in this nonprofit route. For me, it's a, it's a lot more it's about um, volunteerism. In other words, um, uh, that that everyone who participates in Wikipedia does so of their own free will. If they don't want to do it, they don't do it, and that's fine. There's no compulsion involved, and that's really the moral principle um, that I think is far more important than, than for-profit versus non-profit. Down here, um, we go, uh, and here's, here's this part right here that, oh, it's highlighted the entire article. <laughs> Uh, it says, Ed, the Wikipedia editors have upheld the diehard objectivist Jimmy Wales, as the New York Times put it in 2008, as a benevolent dictator, constitutional monarch, digital evangelist, and a spiritual leader. That's fucking creepy as shit. Uh, that's the dude that owns Wikipedia. And... So he chooses objectivism and volunteerism, which basically is like he's reaping the benefit of what other people are editing, right? Like other people get to do the work. They might get paid. They might not get paid. But hey, it's up to them about how much they want to edit and how much they don't want to edit. So it's fine. Don't even worry about it, you guys. Uh, and then he reaps the benefit of it. So then he's getting money from all of these other things to grow his platform to get more editors that may or may not be getting paid and how they do get paid is by the corporations that pay jimmy wales to run his site companies like google and microsoft and apple and craigslist and the cia and the fbi and the nypd and bp they all pay wikipedia and then they hire other people whose sole job is to constantly be on wikipedia to edit narratives and he's fine with that because the companies are also paying with him or, or, or they're paying him to be objective about the money he's receiving from these corporations to control the narrative through Wikipedia, which is one of the largest and high traffic websites. And so basically, because he receives these profits, he has deemed himself the god of objectivism. That's, I think, what Jimmy Wales thinks of himself. That he's this digital, I mean, they described him as a digital evangelist in 2008. You know, like this guy, I I'm wholeheartedly think that if like he, if you say objectivism to him or just quote the fountainhead, this guy will probably get like a raging fucking boner. Um, and I have to, I, I will, dis, I will disclose this. Um, uh, first of all, who doesn't get a raging boner at the thought of Ayn Rand? Am I right, fellas? Huh? Come on, get out of town. Uh, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I don't know a lot about Ayn Rand. I've, I've seen a couple of videos about Ayn Rand. I've seen her speak a few times and I have disagreed with the woman more often than not. Um, the whole like individualist hyper-capitalist viewpoint. I mean, if you, if you guys have paid attention to my comedy and watched my shit regularly, like I'm a fucking weirdo cooperative socialist, you know, like I'm a weirdo revolutionary cooperative socialist. That's, that's just what I am. I'm just like, Hey, everybody should help each other out. If you can pay for it, that's cool. If you can't, that's okay. Come hang out. 
come learn some things. It's fun. We're having a good time and we're learning and we're doing a good time. Uh, this guy's like, no, if you can make money off of it, you should make money off of it. And that's what they're doing, right? Like he talks about volunteerism. Yeah, the volunteers aren't getting paid for doing the work to make Wikipedia like the thing that makes Wikipedia what it is. He is reaping the benefits of it. He's just like, I made a thing that you can edit and put information on. I guess that's that's good. Give me money. And that's and that's what they fucking do. <laughs> Uh, Wales went in front of Congress and uh, he's quoted to say uh, that he will maybe, maybe be helpful to, the, to government operations and homeland security. That's what he wanted to do. In the same speech, he says he wants to uphold the American values of generosity, hard work, and freedom of speech. Motherfucker, you censor anti-war journalists and you're talking about freedom of speech? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you can't sit there and be like, hey, if you talk about the military industrial complex and how we don't need to currently be engaging in seven plus wars and also try to have a military and uh, financial coup of the country of Venezuela, as well as the country of Bolivia and the country of Nicaragua. If you say anything about any of that sort of shit and not just say, hey, the CIA is pretty great. We should all give hand jobs to everybody in the CIA. If you don't say that, We'll fucking bar you. We will fucking censor you. We will put a red bar over your journalistic name and we will kill all of your journalistic integrity. If you're a real investigative journalist, we will say, fuck you. Get the fuck out of here. Like, that's not freedom of speech. He has an overwhelming amount of wealth based off of the volunteerism of other people. And he claims to be, oh, he wants to uphold generosity. Motherfucker, you're not generous. If you were, you would be paying the people that volunteer to cite the sources on your website. Hard work for volunteers. Yeah, that you're upholding American values, which is overworked and underpaid. That's American values. That's what it really is. Wikipedia um, deleted the sources about uh, Venezuelan foreign aid. Um, so the USAID, which is basically the charitable industrial complex wing of the CIA uh, that have been known to be connected to coups, the USAID sent aid to Venezuela claiming that, oh, well, it's Venezuela, oh, the people can't eat. Well, it was because of American sanctions that they weren't able to eat. You put, Amer you put sanctions to make sure that they wouldn't be able to get the money that they actually deserve to get. They're, they're, like Venezuela's actual money they were being barred from getting. So um, the state wasn't able to, uh, to, to, to get money to run these programs to feed these people. So the USAID sent these aid trucks down and there were claims that, oh, the Venezuelans are burning, the pro Maduro people are burning the trucks. And there were live stream, real time live streams that proved that it wasn't, that it was actually the, uh, the USAID truck drivers themselves that were like burning these trucks. And there were live streams proving all this. And people use that to cite the source and, uh, and Wikipedia took them down. <clears throat> they deleted the source. Live streams from actual people on the ground. And Wikipedia deleted that shit. Hedges, uh, Chris Hedges, if you're unfamiliar with Chris Hedges, not particularly a fun person. <laughs> no, I like Chris Hedges a lot. It's just, he's not somebody that like, He's not going to give you the hopeful outlook. He's just like, hey, listen, this is how we're fucked. All right. Everybody should identify how we're fucked. Okay. Next. <laughs> like, uh, Hedges basically said that uh, this is a tool to propagate the reigning ideologies and biases of the ruling elite. And that is 100% what Wikipedia is doing. Uh, they, are, they are definitely showing you one side. He's aligning himself with the government. Jimmy Wales is aligning himself with the government. Um, he's talking about uh, being helpful to government operations and homeland security. That's why the CIA gets to fund it. That's why the CIA gets to hire people to, to change narratives. The FBI does the same thing. The NYPD is going into changing information about Eric Garner, you know, and getting caught with their hand in the proverbial cookie jar. This guy's the, 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 Jimmy Wales and Wicked. And, and he, you know what? It, what really sucks is like I've used them as a source before because there is some information that that, you know, you can only find on Wikipedia. But it's but it's interesting because I've had a feeling that this kind of shit was going on. And this is, you know, basically confirmation because I was looking at it and I was going, mm, this is this is kind of a weird twist on, you know, this is they're, they're kind of making some of these strikes 
appear like it's the striker's fault. But based on the information, this is just a response to the government not recognizing the strikers as people. Um, you know, the, there, there were some, the, just the way the language was being used, it, it seemed very odd. Um, and it was essentially to prop up the people like the, like the anti-strikers, you know, like, oh, these guys are just trying to earn a living. They're just trying to make millions and millions of dollars off the backs of the American worker. How dare they? You know, and, it's, and that's the objectivism to this guy. He has no problem with, with people becoming millionaires. And he's making sure that the editors, the volunteers that are going in and making these edits are pushing that narrative. Let's look at some comments. Jen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to look at your big long comment in a bit. I'm going to bring that up at the end. Uh, you said articles came out today exposing Fox News for al alerting pics of Capitol Hill protesters for overlapping uh, pics from different photographers. Uh, Fox ended up kind of admitting it. Yeah, they had to retract the story because they because they make shit up. <laughs> uh, leader days, Donald Trump's beat day here. Yeah. Uh, I believe that I was on tour. I think that's coming up. If I remember correctly, I think it's coming up. Uh, it's either coming up or or it, it just happened and we nobody cared. Jay Jackson, oh, you're a martial arts master. What are your top three special moves? Uh, we got, uh, we, we got, uh, I got this right here. So I have a weapon of choice and it's, uh, it's the kitty punch. So I got, I, I get my cat thing and pow, pow, right in the eyes. Boom. That's one. Uh, the other one is a is a uh, is a flying roundhouse kick. Uh, so I fly in the air and I twist around and I roundhouse somebody right to the face. Uh, I taught that to Chuck Norris. So you're welcome, Chuck. Uh, and my third move is uh, is I I um, I I, uh, uh, I read the entire uh, Great Expectations. Boom! That's a winner every time. Uh, Jen, I played a lot of Pac-Man. Explains the weight gain. <laughs> uh, uh, Wales, J, J. Jackson again. Wales sounds exactly like a second-year philosophy student who just got done reading Atlas Shrug and brings it up at parties every single conversation. <laughs> uh, yeah, it kind of does. Yeah, it kind of does. He's like, I figured I kind of lo I, I learned what libertarianism is. You guys want to talk about libertarianism and only the definition of it that I read in a in a in a, in a economy class book. <laughs> uh, Dad, I'm a, I'm gonna just look away for a sec. Do you do you <laughs> do what you do? Nothing to see here. Honor me and my charitable spirit. Yeah, that's Jimmy Wales. That's Jimmy Wales in a nutshell, you guys. Yeah, it's nailing it. He's just pretending to be fucking honorable when he's fucking not. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you for your comments, folks. I appreciate it. It's always fun when you guys leave comments. Uh, we're going to move to the last part of this thing, and we're going to wrap things up. Uh, so I'm, I talked about the uh, censorship of um, Pittsburgh, journalist, uh, Pittsburgh journalist Alexis Johnson. And I also read the response from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette who censored this black journalist from covering protests. Uh, that was a fun thing that happened in my city. So we're going to do a follow-up. We're going to read this follow-up article that just came out the other day and uh, kind of follow up on that story we talked about from Friday. Uh, there is no audio on this, which is good. It's just going to be me kind of reading through. So this is Keith Burris right here. Keith Burris and Donald Trump. Uh, Keith Burris is, is the guy that wrote the response saying that they didn't do it based on race. Even though there was a black journalist, there was a black photographer, and a bunch of other journalists that were covering protests, barred from covering protests. They were just like, we're not doing it anymore. And, uh, and basically, they switched the, um, switched the articles. Uh, they they edited the articles. They changed the photo from like photos of the protests to show how large it was to propaganda of those cops kneeling and you know showing their solidarity and then turning around and pepper spraying all the fucking protesters, right? So that's what they were showing. And uh, and then this photo comes out that's been that's been floating around from 2016. So this is Keith Burris, the guy that wrote the response saying, "I'm not racist." Sure, a bunch of black journalists were censored from covering. Uh, 
you know, protests about one of the largest civil rights movements in the last decade, but that's just because of journalistic objectivism. Uh, yeah, him and fucking Jeremy Wales can go hang out and, you know, jack each other off to, while reading fucking Fountainhead to each other. Uh, so, uh, in 20, let's read the article. In 2016, Pittsburgh Post Gazette publisher and then editor in chief John Robinson uh, Block was photographed on a private plane. Uh, with presidential candidate Donald Trump. The then photograph was shared with the Pittsburgh City paper by a source who took a screenshot from Block's Facebook page with the caption, in 39 years of full-time journalism, I've met many interesting people. This was more than memorable. In the photo, both men are smiling and thumbs give, uh, Trump is giving a thumbs up to the camera. The photo circulated widely on social media throughout the city with some claiming uh, that it showed the head of Pittsburgh's largest newspaper favoring Trump. Uh, Pittsburgh Post Gazette, by the way, is not the conservative paper in Pittsburgh. I mentioned that on Friday. It, it's worth mentioning again. They are somewhat, they are somewhat center left. I would say they're more neoliberal, but I think they're center left. Uh, because, but what didn't circulate widely in Pittsburgh at the time was that Keith Burris, the then the Toledo Blade editorial page editor, was also on the plane with Trump and Block. Today, Burris is the executive editor of the Post Gazette, in addition to being the director of the opinion pages of both newspapers uh and a photo on occasion shared with city paper earlier by an anonymous source okay so why is this significant today uh so this was the same day okay so this came out later in the day uh burst posted a non-apologetic response in recent controversy surrounding the post gazette in a column titled truth fairness in the pittsburgh post gazette uh and he writes we will not apologize for upholding professional standards in journalism or attempting to eliminate bias. That's his claim, but it's very clear that like you you don't want to cover protests and you chose a photo of propaganda instead of showing like what the protests actually were and then you changed the article and there's proof of that happening as well that we that we talked about on Friday. Um, so again, if you didn't if you didn't I would go check out that video after this if you have time, if not do it later whenever you want to. Um, that claim of eliminating bias was the decision made by management, uh, that sent the Post-Gazette newsroom in turmoil. Management, like Burris, removed Alexis Johnson, a black reporter, from protest coverage last week after claiming she showed bias because of a tweet below, right? And she basically shows, uh, she, she makes a joke that it's, oh, it's looters that don't care about the city, but then it's like, oh, wait, they're just from the Kenny Chesney concert. Uh-oh, right? It's like, you can see all the, and this is like a yearly fucking event every year the fucking Chess Knights show up and, and they're just like, we're gonna, we're gonna rock out with your cocks out. And then they fucking trash the city. Uh, and no one says anything. And everybody's like, oh, good times, huh? Locker room talk. Okay. Um, since then, Michael Santiago, a black photographer at PG, was also removed from documenting protests. Two published stories were pulled from the PG website and dozens of other union, union journalists have uh, been conflicted out of coverage uh, after showing support. So basically anybody that showed support, um, uh, Lauren Lee, Ashley Murray were the two that we talked about on Friday, uh, had their articles changed, their photos changed, uh, which means that the photographer, the photographers don't get credit or paid for, for those photos as well. So, uh, basically claiming more than 80 journalists on staff were too biased to cover one of the biggest civil rights movements of the modern era. Again, why is the Trump photo so, uh, significant? Because when you're calling out a staff member for bias without explaining what her what exactly her bias is, it's important to look in the mirror. Yeah, he doesn't really claim what his bias was. Um, it was under Burris that longtime editorial cartoonist Rob Rogers was fired for what Rogers said were critical cartoons of President Donald Trump. Uh, Rogers was replaced by cartoonist Steve Kelly, who received criticism for drawing three sexist cartoons in one week. I do remember that. Uh, I've known Rob Rogers. I, Rob Rogers is one of the first people that, uh, when I was in seventh grade, encouraged me to like continue pursuing a, a career in art. And then I got to meet him as an adult. Um, and he's a super nice, super cool dude. Uh, don't always agree with the politics, but that's okay. You are allowed to disagree with your, the people that you like. You're allowed to disagree with them as long as you can have civil discourse with them. Uh, so 
as we continue. Burris is also the author, uh, author of the now famous 2018 editorial Reason as Racism, which was published on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, claiming that calling someone a racist is the new McCarthyism. False. Uh, calling someone racist is calling someone racist. Uh, McCarthyism still exists today, uh, despite the fact that we've numerously times over and over again proved that Russia Gate is a bullshit narrative. Um, uh, calling someone racist is not the new McCarthyism. That's like that's literally like what they do with the Black Lives Matter movement. By the way, is that they say that this is Russian inter interference? Like they're like, oh, the Russians are making this happen. It's like that's all fucking bullshit. Huh. Okay, the editorial acted as a defense of Trump since the president said racist statements when calling immigrants from Haiti and African nations as coming from shithole countries. So he's just like, oh, but, you know, maybe we should just say that anyway. This is uh, from the article. If the president had used the word hellhole instead, would that have been racist? Yes. Uh, if he would have if he would have used the word failed states, would that have been racist? No, but why are they failed states? Were they failed states because of American interventionism? The word failed state has a lot of different meanings, so you can't just throw the word failed state around. America could be considered a failed state because of all the things that are happening right now, and I think the protests are proof of that. But you don't want to cover the fact that America is a failed state via the protests because you are a biased dickhead. Okay, uh, but these nations... Uh, there are nations that are hell holes in this world and there are failed states america uh, <laughs> it's not racist to say that this country cannot take only the worst people from the worst places and that we want some of the best people from the best places many of which are inhabited by people of color that's not racism it is reason that's not what he said uh and that's also not reason uh you should be helping people is especially when you create the refugee crisis. You should be taking in Syrian refugees considering you're one of the reasons why that fucking war exists in that place anyway. You should be taking Yemeni refugees because America is the reason why that war exists anyway. You should be existing Venezuelan refugees considering you're waging an economic war in Venezuela right now that's creating a, a, a crisis of poverty in that country. Do I need to go on? Africa, you should be taking refugees from the country of Africa because you are continuing to put war in that country that is destabilizing these economies, that is destabilizing these countries, countries that you have no fucking business being in. Do I need to go on? Search good Twitter, and there are also a lot of allegations from current and former staffers of unethical practices under PG management, including toning down stories and pulling images that contain photographs of black people. One of the allegations that Burris uh, softened the story is from Colcom Foundation, a Pittsburgh foundation started by white nationalists that donates millions of dollars to anti-immigrant groups. According to former PG staffer, Burris ordered quotes removed from the story where the Southern Poverty Law Center comments... Uh, about benefactors of Colcom's money. Two of the biggest benefactors, uh, the Federation of Immigration Reform and the Center of Immigra Immigration Studies have been deemed hate groups by the SPLC and have been accused of white nationalism. FAIR subsequently shared this uh, the PG story on social media uh, uh, to thank Colcom for its work. In April, SPLC obtained emails that showed two Trump staffers who wrote his latest immigration order Halting green cards have both have ties to FAIR and CIS. In Burr's piece this morning, he posed the question about pulling Johnson from the cupboard. Did we fail to appreciate what the new civil rights movement means to a young black woman? Yes, you did. Address this in the video. Did we miss the larger context of what's happening in our country right now? Yes, you definitely did. Address that in the video. Uh, as we attempted a teaching moment with a young reporter, did we miss what could have been a teaching, uh, what could have been our own teaching moment? Yes, you did. Address that in the video as well. The answer to all these questions is clear, clearly yes. Oh, I'm validated. I'm validated. But then Burris followed up with, uh, but no fair person could make a case that our actions were race-based. Hmm. Hmm. Except when we look at the evidence coming out of the PG newsroom. Uh, so it is not biased. So... It's not biased for a newspaper publisher and executive editors to fraternize with a Republican presidential candidate who later becomes president of the United States and to apply conservative bias into editorial decisions that defend that politician and views that align with him. 
just as it's not biased to pull a black reporter off protest coverage for a tweet while not doing the same thing for a white reporter. But it is biased for a reporter to tweet a photo about trash in a parking lot and make a joke about looters. Got it. Yeah. So uh, it's a little follow-up situation uh, from our video on Friday uh, where we talked about... Uh, well, what, you know, the subject of, of uh, censorship. Uh, why is this important? I address this uh, on Friday. I'll, I'll, I'll repeat it again because it, it is worth repeating. Um, journalists being censored is a major fucking problem because it means that you are not getting all sides of the story. You, this black reporter should be out there covering protests. One of the things he said was, oh, well, she's a social media reporter. What does that one? What does that mean? And two, why does that matter? If she wants to advance in her career and be a protest journalist, and let her fucking be a protest journalist, especially during the time of a brand new civil rights movement that's that's blowing up in this country. Like, are you serious? This is on a local level. We just talked about how it, on a national level this is happening, and on an international level this is happening with the Gray Zone, Mint Press News, Telesur. WikiLeaks, those are international censorship stories. This is a local censorship stories. Once again, all of this shit happens on all levels. And if we don't pay attention to it on all levels, when there's a censorship story in the small scale, you know, then people can dismiss the large scale ones. And if we only concentrate on the large scale ones, then we allow it to happen in the small scale ones. It's important to talk about this stuff. I'm not saying that, hey, this conservative guy shouldn't have his voice out there. He should, and he gets to. Uh, clearly, he gets to make the decisions on, on what voices are even out there, and that is the incorrect. If, you're, if, you, if you do have journalistic integrity, then you should show the accurate story. Fine. Show the stories of the protests and show the story of what the cops are saying. People will make their decision based on what, what they know to be the truth. That's journalistic integrity. But telling people what they need to know, telling people what is and isn't, sw shifting the story, changing the narrative, that's not journalism. That's you being a biased dickhole. And it's important. It's important to cover this stuff. The censorship on the, on the ground floor is the same thing as the censorship on the, on the international scale. So this guy should uh, not be the executive editor of the Post-Gazette. The Post-Gazette needs to probably print up a bunch of fucking retractions. Um, I mentioned this on Friday. I have been trying to get a hold of Ashley and talk to her about her side of the story as well, because clearly this guy is, is just blasting his side of the story. Uh, there is a newspaper that's covering it, but I want to talk to Ashley and, and, and you know, so I'm, I'm trying to get, but she's got a lot going on right now. So, when things cool off, she'll, you know, and if she has time, I, I'm hoping that, you know, we can make that happen. Um, but, uh, yeah, let's check your comments. Uh, that's why racists hate live streams. Racists are super touchy lately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no kidding, right? Is uh, there? There's a lot of dog whistles going around, and, uh, and, and they just, uh, they, like, what, you know, like all they need to do is listen to some people. Like we're listening to you. We've we've been listening to you, motherfucker. Like we've we've listened to you and we've countered all your arguments and we've you know said this, that, and the other. And uh, you're not you're not returning that. There's no reciprocity. You just get to continue to say, well, it's not reason. I love how racists use that term too. Reason. Right. So it's ta it's taken like the skeptic and free thinking community into this thing of like, oh, if you call yourself a skeptic or a free thinker, you must be a crazy racist conspiracy theorist that hates all black people. It's like, no, we're not. We're we're looking at the objective story in place. Sometimes the left fails. Sometimes the right fails. Sometimes the center fails. Right. Like we have to if you want true objectivism, you don't take money from the fucking CIA. You don't you don't. Uh, print stories that only benefit one political side of the argument. 
there's times where I know I've, I've said like, Hey, I know this guy's a conservative, but brings up a valued point. Like I, I know I've done that before because when he, when, when they do, they do when they don't, they don't, you know, I, my point, my side is always what's, what's best for the people, what's going to help the people get, you know, um, improve their lives and, and live the best lives that they can. That's what, that's, that's my perspective. That's my point of view. But like we talked about earlier, you know, from the Chappelle special is people trust comedians, people trust people in entertainment, people trust other artists because they are, they are for the people and they're of the people. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not fucking rich. I'm, I'm, you know, living in my parents' fucking apartment right now, uh, thinking about how I'm going to pay off my, uh, pay my car payment next month. And, uh, I don't have an answer, but I'll, but I'll figure it out. You know, I bet everybody else is going through the same thing. Everybody else is going through that same shit. Uh, and that's why people trust comedians and, and musicians and other artists, because we are of the people. We can't trust these journalists because they're not of us. You think fucking executive editor of the, uh, uh, the, the, the Pittsburgh post Gazette is, is of us. Fuck no. Fuck no. That dude makes way fucking more money than me or anybody else. Not not to say that people don't, but that dude's like a fucking you know multimillionaire. Nancy Pelosi isn't one of us. She's a multimillionaire. She has two fridges. How many people do you know have two fridges? It's crazy pants. She lives in a fucking mansion. The reason why people trust artists is because we are up to people. Uh all right, folks, uh, we're going to wrap wrap things up here. Um, I'm going to put up this banner at the end. That's the ending banner. Uh, if you can, if you would like to, you can make a donation. Uh, become a sustaining member. If you become a sustaining member, uh, you get some cool perks. You get, uh, you get uh, unreleased uh, stand-up comedy. And um, what else you get? You get unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling stuff. You get free tickets to the virtual stand-up comedy shows, which are happening Friday nights at... 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central. Um, check my website for those dates. Uh, go to krishmohan.com to check those. Uh, I'll put up the link. Um, oh, one, one more comment. That's why we need to support our independent media and comedians. Donate, go to a show, do whatever you can. Yeah, Jen's got it. Jen's nailing it. Go buy a ticket. Go make a donation. You don't have to, but if you if you can, that'd be cool. Uh, I'm, I'm down. I'm down for that. Uh, so here's, here's the link for the, uh, for the virtual standup comedy show. 50% of my ticket sales are going to grassroots organizations and venues across the country. Each week it's new material. Each week it's a new, uh, grassroots organization that we are supporting this Friday, this Friday, June 19th, it's going to be the Juneteenth special. We're going to be talking about Juneteenth. We're going to be talking about some of the terms that we're hearing, uh, all cops, bastards, defund the police, black lives matter. What do those terms mean? Uh, we're, we're, we're going to be talking about that. So if that's of interest to you, get your tickets to that show. Uh, donations can be made directly on my website. You can make a one-time donation. You can become a sustaining member, get free tickets to those shows we just talked about. Uh, you get unreleased stand-up comedy material. You get weekly updates uh, from me about all the videos that I've put out. Uh, you get a bunch of cool stuff there. Um, and my album. Um, you also get a free copy of my album if you become a sustaining member as well. Uh, and uh, the album right now is available on Bandcamp for just a dollar because I didn't want to price anybody out, and I want everybody to be able to get the album. Um, if, uh, uh, I also have free copies of the album, if you need it, uh, that's, that's there as well. And, uh, I think that's it. Um, I'm going to try to go live tomorrow. Um, yeah, I might, I'm going to try my best to go live tomorrow, uh, since I missed Saturday and there's one or two other little things that I do want to talk about, um, in the coming week and, uh, and, and put up some extra, extra videos for you guys. So, uh, but thank you guys for tuning in. I know this was uh, the Sunday live streams tend to be a little long, but uh, I, 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 don't know, I, I find them fun. They're fun. It's fun, good, fun stuff to talk about. And when you guys leave comments, it makes it more fun. So uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for hanging out. Um, and uh, we'll see you. We'll see you on the road.